Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of the Heroes Chronicles series. Now, the way I'm going to do this is each of the games were sold standalone type thing, and then eventually it was all bundled together, and there were all their various random things. I'll explain a little bit of that here in a minute, but I'm going to keep each of the games separate as far as their own playlist, but it'll all be under the HOM type thing. There's like a Heroes of Might and Magic uh, section on my ch on my channel. You guys can just go there and all the HOM stuff that's going to be related to HOM will be there. So you guys will be able to watch it from there. But yes, so Warlords of the Wasteland is the one that we finished first. That's going to have its own playlist and this is going to have its own playlist. That way we don't have like episode 485 which is going to be probably like 30 to 40 episodes of each and we'll just move on that way. Anyway, the cool thing about the Heroes Chronicles games were they released... Um, I think all four at the same time, or one right after another pretty quickly. Anyway, there was going to be four in the original collection, and then if you got any two of the four, you got a free game. If you got any three of the four, you got two free games. So, chapters one through four, and then chapters five and six. And then eventually they decided to add seven and eight to tie everything together and make it all make sense and all that wonderful fun stuff. That being said, it is time for us to hop in and play, but before we do that, let's watch the opening cinematic, and then we'll come back. Ever have a dream you can't quite shape? It's called a vision, and Queen Allison had a nasty one. Her father's soul was torn from paradise and dragged into the underworld. Allison called for a hero to champion her, but only one responded. Tarnage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop in and play. Oh, and before you guys go and have a fit, this is the uh, starting screen. I just clicked new game, and we're just going to hop in from here. All right, let's hop in and start playing, shall we? Play. And here you'll see that there are a total of what, eight, four, yeah, it's a total of eight uh, campaign missions that we'll be playing through. And as I told you guys last time, I upped it once near the end of the last one. I'm going to go to the Queen difficulty. It's going to make things a bit more difficult, the expert difficulty as it were. The player starts with a handicap and resources, and the computer plays to the best of its ability. Might not be able to handle that, and what is this one? The player and the computer start with the same resources, and the computer plays to the best of its ability. We'll try this. If I get crushed or I find it's really, really too difficult, I will back off of it. I, I'm not that pig-headed or stubborn that I think I'm the greatest player ever, but I did find that the last Heroes Chronicles game was quite easy. And even upping the difficulty, it was a little bit hard to get used to exactly how strong the neutral armies were. I feel like there might have been stronger neutral armies, or maybe there's always the same. I don't know. But it'll take me a little bit of adjustment period to see. Anyway, we're going to try this difficulty. And uh, the conquest of the underworld, the ancestors send Tarnum to help Queen Allison rescue the soul of her father from the depths of the underworld. But the demons and undead are the least of his worries when Tarnum faces his past crimes. Tarna must reach the Underworld Gate and defeat the Devils below to secure the passage into the Underworld. You must not lose Tarnum. All heroes will be limited to level 6, but Tarnum and two of his captains will transfer to the next scenario with all of their skills, spells, and experience. Alright, we can either have the Equestrian Gloves, or we can have the Boots of Speed. I, I think they kind of do the same thing. I'm going to go with the Boots? Eh... <sighs> Anyway, here we go, guys. Let's go. When the ancestors sent Tarnum to protect Queen Allison as she embarked on a dangerous quest into the underworld, he learned that the ancestors had not forgotten his crimes. Was this his punishment? To save the soul of the man who killed him? So if you guys remember, at the beginning of Warlords of the Wasteland, there was a, a battle scene where Tarnum was an unkillable monster, blah, 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 blah. But eventually he fell, and then he was brought up to the ancestors, and they're like, but this is a tale for another time, that is a story best told later. Let's go talk about his origins, and then it went into the whole battle against the wizards and all that stuff. And the guy who killed him is apparently the dude's soul who was just kidnapped from paradise and brought down to hell. So we're now working for that dude's daughter to try to save her father's soul, which is the guy who actually killed us. It's, it's a little ironic, and... 
It's 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 crazy, but it's fine. Alrighty. The ancestors have summoned me to the kingdom of Arathia to help young Queen Allison, who had a dream that her father's soul was stolen from paradise and taken down into the darkness of the underworld. I have seen the faces of her knights and realize that I am the only one brave enough to come to her and aid against the forces of the underworld. But I have also come to realize that the ancestors have a truly twisted sense of humor. They want me to rescue the soul of the man who killed me. If it were not for Ryan Griffinhart, I might be alive today. If I had more time, perhaps I would have come to my senses and ended my tyranny. I realize now that I was wrong, and I must believe that if given enough time, I would have been able to correct the sins I committed while king of the barbarians, the same sins that made me unworthy of entering paradise. Alright, so Tarnum's Tale is one of redemption and... Well, hopefully atonement. That's his his whole goal. He's trying to work back and pay off all the crimes that he committed and everything else. So he comes back in various forms. This time he is considered a Haven Knight. And we're going to be going into the underworld and facing off against undead and demons and who knows what else. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I, I like the story. I do. I find it to be quite enjoyable. Anyway, we're going to hop in here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab ourselves the Archer's Tower. Because we do need some troops to do some murdering with. So it's going to be a bit weird because you're going to see him. He's going to kind of go all over the place. really wish I knew if the guys would join you or not. He's going to be, a, you know, he was a barbarian, a stronghold in the last one. He's going to be a knight in this one. The next one, he's actually going to become a wizard, which is terrifying if you think about it. Considering how passionately he hated wizards. And then beyond that, he's going to become uh, an elf, I guess? Or something along those... Oh, did I just trap myself? I hope I didn't. No, I didn't. Good. Excellent. Alright, we need to transfer the troops. Alright, so... Oops. So, a couple things here to point out. We have Cuthbert. I think that's who... It, yes. That is who we have. Alright, we have a Ballista Master, which means we'll always start with this, which is good. This is the one that increases our movement over land. It's the same thing as the gloves. I don't know if we're going to find the boots or the gloves in this map. That could have been more useful, but eh, it's fine. Anyway, we always get to start with this, so that's cool. He's also got leadership as well, so basic leadership and basic artillery. He's very much going to be similar to the last Tarnum that we played, whereas he's going to be kind of a brute force, murder stuff. Smash things with his face, headbutt it to death, and be victorious. Cuthbert is probably going to be one of our uh, primary dudes. He's going to be a magic guy. He's already starting with advanced wisdom or basic wisdom, which is good. And estates, which is always nice to have on your secondary people if you don't plan to fight with them a lot. I will fight with him some, but not a tremendous amount. My hope this time around is Tarnum will be able to get either earth magic, um, it's just earth magic, basic, advanced, and master, or expert, or air. One of those two. If I get one of those two, I'll be super happy. If I don't, I'll be okay. It just won't be quite as happy. So, that's the plan, guys and gals. I know the start of this is always a little bit weird. A lot of talking, a lot of babbling and whatnot. But hopefully you can put up with it. Alright, let's go over here. Oh, they want to join me. Good. That's what I was hoping for, but you never know. Alright. Lots of money and stuff. You can barely believe your eyes as you approach the gold mine ahead. A pack of skeletons busily fill carts with gold. As you approach, though, they drop their tools and pick up swords. Stay away, they shout. We didn't hand over this mine when we died, so we're certainly not going to do it now. Aw, oh, they're awed by my power, though. I feel so bad. I, I don't really care in one way or the, the other. It's, it's fine. It's totally fine. All right, we got to change some settings, as will always be the case. I think we like the medium one. I'm not entirely positive. We're tur we'll turn down some of the uh, the effects, volumes, and whatnot. Uh, I like to have all this stuff pretty much on. It's fine. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. We'll see if the animations are correct. I think that's fine. Let's uh. Let's go up to the max. The max sometimes feels absurd in certain games. I can't recall if that, this is the case in this one. No, the max is fine. We'll go with the max. Alright, he's going to waddle on over. He's going to get shot by that guy. We're going to move up a bit closer and done. 
All right, perfect. And we will tag the gold mine because that's a thousand gold per day and pretty darn nice. I think we're going to head off to the west moving forward here. So let's end our first turn. We have done something. Ryan Griffinhart's name is not new to me. He was the first king of Arathia, an upstart nation that challenged my authority as king of the land. After years of vicious combat, Griffinhart was able to maneuver me into a battlefield of his choosing. I can still smell the mud. I still remember my enemy's face as he plunged his sword through my belly. It's unfair for the ancestors to force me to save this man. Is he really innocent? He's not even a barbarian. Let Griffin Hart's soul rot in the underworld for all I care. Well, you see, he's warming up to his task quite uh, happily, I might add. He's not a big fan. Excellent, sir. We were just on our way to tell you that we are interested in joining your cause. If you visit the barracks weekly, we'll be very glad to sign up with you, says a swordsman pointing to the barracks just behind him. Cool. That's why we're here, sir. To be recruited. All right, cool. Um, Let's go take a peek over here. And we'll probably end up gathering forces from that guy as well, but until we know for certain, let's not run the risk. Um, yeah, we got some barracks. It's fine. Cuthbert, do you you have a spell book? We have a mage. All right, we can probably make this work, right? We'll try it. Oh, they do want to join us. Perfect. All right. I said I, we probably have enough troops that we can try this. It's probably not that bad. Go ahead and end the turn again, and we see there's already an enemy close to us. Here at the border to the underworld, the land is dangerous to travel. Not far to the north is an inferno town that has been harassing Arathian troops and citizens for decades. There's only one way to handle such a pest. Build a good-sized army and attack them as quickly as possible. A defeated enemy cannot hurt you. That is a true statement. It's a quest guard. We want proof that you are indeed fighting for the side of good. Bring us seven whites so we can destroy them, and we will believe you and let you pass. Interesting. We don't have much in the way of protection, but if you return with 11 royal griffins, we could fly away to a safe place. Then you could do as you wish. Interesting as well. We're a bit uh, overreaching right now. and It's a little dangerous doing what I'm doing, so it may bite me in the booty. We'll see. Alright, that should be the last of our uh, actual troop gathering buildings. We still need to get a griffin bastion, and we need to get like the citadel and stuff, but we'll be able to do the town hall and other things of that nature. And that will be pretty useful for us, mostly because, well, we need money. Money is quite important in this game, a little known fact. I guess we're going to try to face off against the pack of troglodytes. I think we can probably do it. Mine, this gold is mine. Or this is my gold. Go away and find your own, you greedy humans. Well, they seem to be afraid of us. That's a good sign. All right, let's go ahead and do a giant blast of magic arrow on him. Ha! He never saw it coming. Mostly because they're blind. You see, they have no eyes. Troglodytes are notoriously known for being blind. I know. It's a sad thing to be known for, but it is their life, as they say. All right, let's get rid of you. Bloop! Now, these guys are the equivalent to our pikemen. I'm sure if you guys have watched the Hom series, you know this. Or if you played HOM 3, you know the Troglodytes are the Tier 1 units, just like our Pikemen are Tier 1 units. It's all fine. Stopping for a quick break, you wander into the shadows of a cool forest. Immediately, you stumble upon a majestic bird shimmering with all the colors of the rainbow. Cool. You stop in your tracks. Your legs won't move. This is the famed bird, more beautiful than any creature you have ever seen. It peers at you, looking straight into your soul. The sudden start of... With a sudden start, the magnificent bird lifts off, leaving a sparkling blue feather behind. You pick up the feather, and the men take this as a sign or a good omen, raising their morale significantly. Sweet. I'll take it. And we just got some more gold again. Cool. All right, ending our turn. And as you see, there are people right on the edges, ready to murder us. Heaps of treasure and resources are simply laying about on the ground. So I've decided to concentrate on building the troop generator or generation dwellings right now rather than concentrating on structures such as the town hall. Of course, my advisors agree with this tactic. Okay. Well, you say that. I've already done that, though. I mean, that's kind of your, your go-to move anyway. But now is the time for the town hall. 
We did all the unit producing structures, so the town hall is it at this point. I sort of want to try to like go at him, but I feel like that's not a good idea. All right, we're gonna go back. We're gonna get one big group of army, or one big army, group it up, and then we're gonna probably head out through the north. We'll see where that takes us. Is this a secondary hut thing? I think so. Now, for secondary huts or skills like the witch's hut, they they'll give you a secondary skill or a skill, I should say. So, like we have basic wisdom and basic estates. If you have one primary hero that you're gonna use as your main guy that's gonna do all, most of the fighting. It's generally, generally a good idea to check it with another hero. Second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever hero. Because it could be something that's terrible and super lame. And you don't want it like, um, advanced diplomacy. I don't want that on my main fighter. So it's usually good to check those with other, other troops. Alright, we're gonna go over here, we're gonna gather up the speculum. After scouting the area, you fall upon a hidden chest containing the ancient artifact. Speculum! Sweet. 2,000 monies. I'll take it. Take that eventually as well. Guthbert, you're back. Okay. The citadel must be grown. And I believe we can get some ro well, some unroyal griffins. Some regular griffins? Yeah, just regular griffins. Alright. Throw them into the old mix. And I guess head on over and gather up some more resources. And then give the army away to our boy. Alright, it may be wiser to ignore piles of treasure near a mine and get the mine under produ production as quickly as possible, says one of my advisors. There is always time later to pick up treasure, unless, of course, there are enemies about. Also, you should hire another hero to help you. We can be attacked from both the east and the west, and another hero to protect the flanks is needed. See, these are all very basic concepts at this point. So, I mean, it's good. I'm glad that they're going through them, but they're all pretty basic concepts. All right, what I think I'm going to do, I sort of, I sort of want to let Cuthbert deal with the, I think I will. I think I'm going to let him actually deal with it, because we're going to want to level him up anyway. So while this might seem like a very bizarre move, and it is, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a very bizarre move. I think it may be our best bet, or our absolute worst bet, I don't know which. The fact that that's a ranged group... Makes me nervous. All right, so we can actually get a castle straight away. Perfect. And we'll be able to get the Griffin, the Griffin, the Griffin Bastion immediately as well. None shall pass here. All right, the Magogs are going to be a bit rough, but we might be okay. I'm going to try to let the Griffin soak the hate, or not do that. I still think he's going to be quicker than our archer. Wow. We really did do well with that, didn't we? We guess high mark. No. Oh, no. We get to go. Yeah. Oh, he's too weak. You know what? It's still fine. It worked. And done. Cool. Well, that worked out way better than I actually anticipated. Okay, so he's there. He's going to have to back away. I... I want to say that we can take the fight to him and win. I'm not sure, though. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to buy the spell book. And there's nothing I can really do here, so... I think I'm going to head over that way. Oh, okay. Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind, but okay. Well, he has made his, he has made his stand... He is ready to do battle with me, I guess. He'll probably retreat, though I'm not positive about that. Alright, we're gonna wait. He's gonna get shot. And then we're gonna defend. Oh, are you kidding me? Wow. The level of unluck is astounding. It's fine. Like, like it's... Oh, no. Well, whatever. We did it. Well, we lost six. That's not something that we wanted to see. Eh. 
Basic first aid gives control of the first aid tent to the hero, healing 50 points of damage to the first unit of the selected stack. It's okay. I'd rather get the advanced things. I, I'm not, I'm not big on like those healing. Th like I feel like they're a bit underwhelming. All right, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna transfer everything back over, and it's gonna be fine. And yeah, I think we can probably just. We can't get him yet. So we're gonna have to go here, make sure he doesn't actually come in and take us. We're gonna go, we're gonna build the Griffin Bastion, which is gonna allow us to get more Griffins than last time. And we're gonna actually come over here to start recruiting extra troops. Like, theoretically, he should retreat and go back and get more troops from his own group. We'll see. He may, yeah, so he may come to try to tag up against us. So, I mean, that's always possible, too. But, for now, I think we're fine. Alright, we're going to go with the stables. It's going to give us a little bit of an edge over most of that. Uh, smart money might have gone with... Uh, he actually had enough for all that. Might have gone with the archers, getting them upgraded. That might have been the bigger or better play, but... I really like being able to move a bit further. Like, that makes him happy. All right, we're gonna go tag this back up. I'm gonna come and claim this. Two thousand money there. And yeah, he's gonna really have to maneuver quite a bit to stay ahead of us at this point. Now we're not, by any stretch of the imagination, safe at this point. Keep that in mind as well. Say, pretty good chance that he stays in this town though. So we're gonna go after him here. And then once we defeat him in this area, which is going to be absurdly easy because there's, like, nothing he can possibly do to us. Um, he can't retreat. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll take the city and then that's going to do it for this episode. We'll break it off. Oh, he's got a little, he's got a little dude up there. Boo, it's fine. Ouch. Alright. Let's go ahead and blast you. Very underwhelming, as I'm sure you guys were aware that it was going to be. Alright, we're going to move here, and it's going to be basically him favorably exchanging over us with ranged attacks and spells. Like, we need to get on the other side of the wall, essentially. Which we can do, and we will, actually, but it's going to be a bit rough. So we're going to wait here. And we're going to move here. Take another shot. Again, the exchanges are definitely going in his favor. Over our favor. Alright. Well, I can attack the hounds, and I will. It's not my favorite choice. Okay, we'll attack this. We can't get to his uh, ranged units. He put them in an actual really good spot. Uh... Alright, it's unfortunate, but we kind of have to do that. Alright, I'm going to take a shot at the dogs. I was hoping that maybe we could hurt them a bit more. Alright, well we can't prevent him from shooting anymore at this point, so that's good. And a little bit more exchanging of blows. We'll be able to kill this guy off, no problem. And I guess victory is ours. We don't really have to do anything else. Just get lucky with this attack and this one. Oh, it wasn't enough. Well, we got it either way. There's our victory. There was definitely some casualties. Not a great start to our little... See? Basic diplomacy. No! Not a great start to our little adventure, but not too, too bad. I'm not a big fan of ballistics. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, we can get through walls easier. It's okay. Wow, we, we already vanquished blue. That I wasn't expecting. All right, so we have ourselves another town. It is a Inferno town, or an Inferno town, as it were. And yeah, this is a thing that we have now. Cool. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... What do we need? Just the marketplace? I guess I'll get the marketplace first. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hop back over here, get a marketplace on this side. 
And Cuthbert is going to come over here and grab up the additional archers. And then we're going to go and we're going to try to meet up. And then probably swap who's where and doing what. It's probably fine, but we'll see. Like, I think Cuthbert's going to come up, give him the troops, and then go and start claiming those. I'm not sure. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the start of Conquest of the Underworld. I, I think you guys will have some fun with it. Just like you did with Warlords of the Wasteland. And we'll play through this until we're done with it. No, not until we're done with it. We'll play through maybe the first map and then we'll switch over to something else. Or we might play through two maps because the first one's usually only an episode or two long. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, folks, until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by The Freak Show, and I will see you later. Later.